All set? Yep. Good. And action! No, 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 that's not right at all. Let's try something with more energy. And action! I'm David Yates, director of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and this is... My name's Mark Day, and I've been working with David for the last seven years on virtually everything that he's done. A bit like a married couple, really. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Let's do one more like that, then. Lovely. Sometimes for a single shot, there might be anywhere between three or 20 takes. Yeah. For example, when we shot The Kiss, each of those shots are probably anywhere between five and 27 takes of Absolutely. The Kiss. That was terrific. We'll do one more. Keep running. One like that. Yeah. This is it. We've got it, guys. That was great. You really lost yourself up. The amazing thing about editing a scene is that you have all these choices and Mark will make choices from the material I've shot. And it's a bit like having a, a huge puzzle. So I start putting the things together and try and get it into some sort of shape. Basically, there are a thousand different ways you can cut a scene or a sequence. There's no right way and there's no wrong way. And we spend our days experimenting and exploring. And there's a very curious thing. You get to a point with a scene Whereas if you, you fast forward it at some speed, it suddenly feels like it's suddenly settled it's at felt. a certain rhythm. You always feel it in your tummy when you've got to a point where you think it's poised and it's ready and, and it's, it's working. working. Now let's look at a scene from the film and see how different camera angles can affect the tension. First, the scene in a wide shot. The audience is removed from the action, but the context of the scene is established. Then the same scene using close-up shots. There's more tension since we're closer to the action. We'll get a chance to play with this scene later. But first, let's look at some of the important elements in creating a scene. Music creates mood and atmosphere and expresses the tone of the story. So it's a very, it's a very good way of describing the emotion and drama of a scene. But you can also use music by going against the emotion of the scene yeah. and putting something on that counterpoints it slightly. For example, Professor Umbridge strolling around the school, assessing everybody. It's quite a comedic sequence, and yet there's a very dark edge underneath it. And that sort of jauntiness sort of... Well, it starts off jaunty and then goes into then, a dark place, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, let's look at the Professor Umbridge scene. First, with the music as it appears in the film. And then, with more extreme music choices. Notice how the scene can be dark, or even ironic, depending on the mood created by the music. So when you put music onto your sequence, it's probably worth trying several different radical approaches. You should just experiment, I think, because yeah. that'll teach you a lot about what music does to a sequence. Visual effects in these films are obviously a key component, a huge part of them. Normally what you do is you edit a movie right the way through before you show anybody. Exactly. But because a huge section of this film has a heavy visual effects element, you have to present work early so all these teams of animators and craftspeople can get to work on the scene. And the visual effects, once they start coming in, changes everything again. So it's, it's actually a very fluid, ongoing, organic process. Yeah. Let's take a look at some visual effects from the film and how they can enhance a scene. First, the film footage as it was shot on the set. Then, with visual effects added to give greater impact to the scene. Sound effects are another element that can greatly enhance a scene. Ideally, sound needs to do three things. It needs to tell the story, so it needs to kind of give you a very emotional engagement with something. You shouldn't be self-conscious, you shouldn't think about the sound, it should just pull you in and, and make you feel something. In the scene that you'll see, where Neville kind of tries out his wand effects and gets disarmed by the Death Eater dummy, when I put the sequence together, I get some good wand effects, which kind of really helped me make the cuts work. It's amazing how, without sound, the scene doesn't work nearly as well. But when you, when you put the sound effects of the wand going down, do you remember when I put those on? It really helped. It just brings the whole scene together, doesn't it? It's kind of bizarre. Sound's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And sound actually tends to quicken things cuts. up a wee bit. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at that scene with Neville. First, without sound effects. Spiramus! Whoa! 
And then, with the sound effects added... Spiamus! Notice how the visual effect becomes much more exciting when the sound effect is added. Now you've seen what we've done, you will be given the opportunity to try it out yourself by using different angles, possibly, and by using different music and different effects.